two stories. I don't know, okay, sorry, two memories, childhood memories. I don't know which one comes first, but first one, we were swimming at an aqueduct. It was my mom, my cousin, it was my mom, two adult cousins about her age, and I think maybe two of my brothers. Very blurry. But I remember my cousin Junior swimming out, and it was like a canal or something. And I remember him swimming into a rock, and then the water started picking up. And um, I remember his brother trying to go get him, and he couldn't get him. And I remember my mom crying and calling the police. These are just flashes of memories that I have. Anyway, so my cousin Junior died that day. And I remember the police showing up. And I don't remember much more. But I just always remember Junior passing. Second memory. I was on a pool. On a roof. And I don't know if I fell in. Or if someone pushed me in. But um, I drowned. And I didn't make it out alive. I died, I went to heaven, and um, I, I felt the presence of God, but God doesn't look like anything, but because we have to visualize something, I saw like a throne and this man in a chair, but it kind of gave me like Abraham Lincoln vibes as far as that statue how big and powerful it is instead of like the legs being made of semen or whatever they use it was like a white cloth over it but i didn't see him i just saw from his knees up a little baby girl anyways um i remember seeing junior when i walked in walked into heaven because it was kind of like i want to say like a lounge or something it was just like a whole bunch of people hanging around this statue or this gee god whatever god and it was a whole bunch of people there and I, there was some people that I recognized from my heart recognized them my heart felt like they was family but I didn't know who they were but I can feel this connection and everybody was just like oh and then some people was looking like no like I wasn't supposed to be there like it was wrong and then I saw a door and the door was white and it was really pretty and it was just like oh my gosh it was just so like fluffy and it just felt good and I was like oh I want to walk through that door so while I was walking through the door um I felt God but it was like his arm moved and grabbed me like this and he was still sitting in the chair and he said no not yet it's not your time and I'm like yo but I really want to walk through this door and he said no I need you to do something for me and I was like all right and then I woke up and at this time I was living with my godmother's mom I pretty much lived with everybody my whole life I was three maybe four I wasn't in school so I wasn't five anyways um I woke up and I told her about the dream and I'm like yeah remember last night when I drowned in the pool she's like no baby that was two weeks ago no it wasn't it was last night because I fell in the pool no I fell in the pool I went to heaven and then I died and she kept saying no baby that was a dream but it wasn't a dream because I did die and I go I did go to heaven but what I couldn't figure out is that she told me that it happened two weeks ago when it felt like it just happened. Why would I fall in a pool and then dream that I went to heaven? And the dream was all of three minutes. Everything that happened, happened. Like I saw people, I saw God, and I tried to walk through the door. It was probably not even a whole three minute, you know, scenario. And she told me it was two weeks ago, and I couldn't remember anything that happened in those two weeks. Now, of course, this has been centuries ago, so I can't tell you what happened. I just remember her saying, you don't remember this? You don't remember? And I'm like, no, 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 no. I died. I died. I died last night, and nobody would listen to me when I kept... They listened to me, but nobody would believe me when I said that I died. Well, eventually she did, and she told me I was a really special girl, and that I had to keep my dreams to myself, and I wasn't allowed to tell anybody else but her about those dreams. <sighs> it sucks because I can feel the energy now. She told me not to tell anybody else my dreams because people, um, people don't like special people like me. She told me that I had to keep it to myself and that I wasn't allowed to tell people about my dreams.
and she ended up passing away a few years later. I know that somehow I ended up back with my mother and I didn't want to be with my mom. I wanted to live with her, but something happened and that's who I had to go back with my mother. And now that I think about it, I did tell my mother about a, probably a dream or two I had. And that, yeah, that makes sense. I shouldn't have told my mother because if I wouldn't have told her, then my mother wouldn't have known I was still special, you know? She probably always knew that I was special because when my grandmother, when her, when I was first born, her mother said um, that I was special and that I wasn't like everyone else and I was gonna be a prophet. And everyone said that I was special. Everyone told me, well, not everyone, I'm sorry. My godmothers. tell me all the time that I was special and I was different than everyone else and Pat who was my godmother's mom she told me not to tell anyone about my superpowers which is my dreams and in my dreams I can see things and people that other people can't but she um she ended up passing away in her sleep and I remember being devastated because I always was waiting for her to come back and get me. And she used to tell me that I want you, but you have to go with your mom. And I'm like, why? Why do I have to go back with her? Because I always knew since a little girl that my mother didn't love me. Um, I just, I never felt it. It always felt like my mother was a, a pride woman, a prideful woman. And she wasn't going to let nobody else take on her responsibilities. Like, those kids are mine and I'm going to do my job. You know what I mean? And in hindsight, she did the best that she could with what she had. But I never felt love and affection or care. I knew she was capable of it because I, I knew that she loved and cared and nurtured my brother, Deshaun. But me, I didn't feel it. But I didn't want it, so it didn't bother me. It's not something I ever wanted. It was just like, this is just my life. This is just my life. Um, this is just, you know what I mean? Everybody has a character and my character is that abused girl who has a mother who doesn't love her. I'm not the only one, but that's just, that's just my role in this life is to be an abused kid. So, but with Pat, I didn't feel that. And I felt like a person. I don't know. Like, I felt good. It was kind of like when you're walking through that, through that door where... The door feels good more than it looks good and you just want to walk through the door. I'm speaking about the door in my dream. Anyways, Pat passed away and I knew that I was never going to get love again. So I mean, that was that. You know, she passed away and that's the end of my love life. <laughs> Happened when I was about five or six, six, seven, I don't know. But all I know is that from seven and up, I haven't been loved by an adult oh let me take that back i am mad disrespectful my stepmother elaine i love her more than anyone can imagine because she was the second person to ever make me feel loved outside of those two i've never i didn't experience like true love especially from a woman as far as nurturing and caring my godmother took care of me but i didn't feel nurture and love either it kind of felt like oh i don't have any kids so let me get one of yours and my mom was like oh we'll take the one i don't want that's what it felt like oh i'm gonna take that one because you don't want her and my godmother didn't treat me bad it was always known and felt that i come from my mother and i am here because of my mother and that i was not significant to anyone unless it has something to do with my mother so I was only living with my godmother and she was taking care of me because she loved my mother, not because she loved me and she wanted me. She might have felt different, but that's not the energy I got the whole time I lived with her. Even the experiences I had with her after, like as an adult up until a few years ago. Anyways, um, another story for another day, right? Because we're talking about my spiritual journey. So I'm not allowed to tell people about my spiritualness. I'm not allowed to tell people about my gifts. When people find out about your gifts, they, um, they get jealous or they get scared. So if you get scared, they tell people you're crazy, which is I'm going through now. Now I'm crazy. Now when I try to tell people about my spiritual gifts, they say that I'm crazy. And that's fine. 
Um, but before, they used to just tell me I was retarded or like, I don't want to go there right now. They used to do really, say really hurtful things to me when I was growing up. And they didn't take care of me properly and they used to hurt me mentally. They stopped physically, but mentally they would hurt me any chance. Like mentally they still try to hurt me, it just doesn't work. But that's what they do. Um so I have these gifts and I have dreams and in these dreams I can feel things happening. Sometimes they're good things like I met a guy that I had dreamed about my whole life. And I was like, oh my gosh. I met two guys that I dreamed about my whole life. And I, you know, crazy. What else? I had all kinds of dreams I always knew. Even as a kid, before I understood sex completely, I knew that I was gonna have a boy at 19. They just always told me, the spirits and the people that were around me that nobody else can see, that I can see, he used to tell me all the time I was going to have a son at 19, and that's exactly what I did. Um, they tell me some bad things, too. I know when someone's going to die. I can feel it, and it hurts because sometimes I can feel someone dying, and it hurts because someone's dying. It fucking hurts because you can feel someone dying. And unless you have the powers that I have, you don't understand how bad it hurts to feel someone die. Says, you know... Um, outside of the dreams I would always feel someone or people touching me but it was never inappropriate it was always like comforting because I really I like the feeling of a hug but I don't want to hug people but I like the feeling you get when you hug someone and I like that feeling but I want it without someone actually touching me it's weird it's not weird. I'm not used to like nurturing, so I don't like it. It makes me uncomfortable. Anyways, um, I can feel something hugging me or rubbing me or like, it's okay and I'm crying. And then you know how your best friend be like, it's okay, I got you. I can feel someone or something doing that. I can hear other people speaking to me and it was like, a council and to me in my head because we have to vis every time we feel something we have to visualize it um, it was kind of like I was a part of the mob and I had like this big aggressive like father figure and I had like people telling me what to do this is really weird okay this is all in my head this is why people say I'm crazy okay this is all in my head in my head there's all these people surrounding me and they're like real strong and powerful and they're protecting me and I hear them but I can't tell nobody about them because I'm crazy or because whatever the shit happened to me when I was growing up so I just got to keep it to myself but there was one particular voice inside of me that I was absolutely fucking terrified of this voice was like I would hear it was I'm trying to find my words because it was my voice but it didn't feel like me and this bitch was mad she was mean and she would like if I'm just arguing with Tyrone or something and Tyrone like you stupid and your mama ugly whatever and then something was just inside of me say get up right now before I knock his fucking head off and I'll just get up and go because there's I can feel her knocking the head off and I can feel the head it's not being on his body I can feel these things happening so I would be terrified of that voice because she was mean and I would hear people say how crazy people have demons inside of them I know for sure I got one inside of me because I hear this bitch constantly telling me the shit she gonna do to these people so I'm like yo I gotta go or I would start crying like please don't do this because I don't want her to do that. I don't want to go to jail. But she was so fucking mean. And then sometimes I can feel myself not being there, but I can see me doing the things that I'm doing. But it ain't me. But it's me, but it ain't. So there was this one time, fun story, 
my father had this thing called fight the midget so if you got in trouble and he didn't know if he didn't know if you did it or not you have to fight your way out of it so if it's just like who stole the cookies i ain't do it okay well shit i can't prove that you did it. i can't prove that you don't so if you didn't do it you're gonna be able to whip my ass to prove that you didn't do it i never had to fight the midget but there was this one particular time this is one particular time where um my stepsister um they did something i don't remember what they did and we all got in trouble for it and they kept saying hey she didn't do it she didn't do it my father didn't want to hear it so he was like fight the midget so what he would do is he would get on his knees and he would box us and it's not funny at all i'm laughing because i laughed in my pain but that's how he taught us he a thug he wasn't wrong for that you know what i mean there's a lot of other shit we gonna talk about that he was wrong for fighting the midget was the best that he can do so he got on his knees and we had to fight him so um i don't know what happened but that bitch inside of me fucking took off on him it was like and just took off i don't remember i just remember watching me take off on him and like not on him but like him kind of moving back and then him grabbing me and pushing me down this is not aggressive right he pushed me down and he's like did you just black out and then i just snapped back into it and i was like no and then i remember him calling my mom or my stepmom was like you need to come get her she crazy and i remember my stepmom coming to get me and i remember after that that's when he started abusing me verbally a whole lot more my father was a very abusive man but to me it was more verbally but at that moment, I think he realized that I was crazy. And I think he saw that demon inside of me. And he knew he couldn't take, physically take that demon inside of me. So he had to verbally abuse me. But that's another, for another day. But when that situation happened, that's how I knew for sure that I had two personalities. Because I watched. Because I literally, I watched me try to fight my father. Now, to everybody else who's watching, they're like, I mean, you guys can say like, oh, she's crazy, whatever. But to me, and this is like, as a kid, I was in middle school or something. As a kid, to me, I'm watching myself have an outer body experience. I'm watching me fight the biggest fucking gangster in South Central. Why would I do that? It had to be a fucking demon. It had to be, you know what I mean? So I was just, every time that bitch inside of me said she wanted to fuck someone up, I would run. I would cry. I would get up. I would leave. I would do whatever I had to do so that way that bitch inside of me wouldn't come out. Because I was terrified of her. I don't, she was just so scary. Fast forward to a few years ago, I realized that <laughs> I have multiple personalities. Um... And then I realized that it may be a trigger of um, trauma because I disassociate. One side of me is nice and sweet and just bubbly, rainbow unicorn. And the other side is a bitch that will want, like, oh, she's that bitch. And that bitch is like so fucking fierce. And she's just... So whenever I would be nice and bubbly and then I would turn into that bitch, people would be like, oh, you crazy. Yes, I am. So why do you keep fucking with me? I'm crazy. Leave me alone. And I couldn't fucking figure out why people wouldn't leave me alone if they knew I was crazy. Well, that's because I keep disassociating. So when I'm a crazy bitch, who am I named Christina? It's me. When I'm in Christina, when I'm Christina, then people respect me they get on my fucking way and they give me what i want and what i need and they don't try to play no games with me you know what i mean i get the respect i want whatever they don't fuck with me but when i'm in my true essence and i just want to love everybody and i just want to be so nice and i want to plan i want to have fun i want to jump rope with kids then people take advantage of me they call me dumb they call me green they call me naive when really i just i don't want to have to be a bitch i prefer to watch fucking cartoons with kids i prefer to like cook i prefer to oh clean i love cleaning because it helps me de-stress 
I prefer to like organize things and just be happy and smile and laugh. But motherfuckers can't respect you when you're nice and sweet. They take advantage of you when you love. Like who the? So I have to be a bitch because if I'm not a bitch and I don't be Christina, then y'all take advantage of fucking the nice part of me, my true essence. Y'all take care of, y'all disrespect essence and treat her like she's some whack ass bitch. So I had to figure out how I can cure myself because I don't know why I keep fucking having parts of me that wants to kill everybody and then parts of me that just wants to hug them because I understand they hurt. So it's just like, what am I supposed to do when I want to hurt people? Not because I'm an evil and I'm a demon, because I keep fucking with her, my true essence. So like, now what? Now I got to figure out how to explain to myself that we got multiple personalities. This girl don't want to hear that shit. Now I got to tell her who I am, and who she is, and who we are. But I don't know how to do that. And then that's when we go back to the dreams and spirituality. I was able to realize that I am a spiritual being having a human experience. And that some spiritual beings are born with two souls. So I am one body with two souls. Now if you let Earth tell it, I disassociate. Either way, I have two people, two people inside of me. And I have to get my true essence to understand who we are and who I am that is not who she is and that was really hard I am craving I do see ghosts and spirits and angels I believe that I am an angel sent here by God to wake up other people like me and I'm not sure what that means but that's why it's a spiritual journey I believe that I um, yeah that I'm, I'm literally heaven sent and I'm here to have these struggles and these battles to help other people with these struggles and battles I have multiple personalities and I can't keep hiding the dark side of me because the other side of me is scared that we're going to kill people I only want to hurt the people that hurt me so once I got my other side to realize that, I was cool, but that's another story. I believe that um, it would be a disservice to myself if I did not step into my true essence and let people know that I am, um, I have multiple personalities. I'll either hug you or fuck you up. You pick which one you want. Um, I have special powers. Having dreams is more than having the dreams is just one of my gifts you know what i mean i do study witchcraft but not the witchcraft y'all hear about on tv i'll explain that when i feel like it you know but um there's a lot of us and we have superpowers out there and we have a feeling inside of us and if you have that feeling inside then you know keep following me into my journey and we'll figure this shit out together because i don't know what's going on but i just know that the ego will have you believe in you're the only one and I can't be the only fucking person who sees spirits, who connects with the dead, who has dreams and who has multiple personalities. I don't know what's going on, but I just know that the ego will have you believe in you're the only one. And I can't be the only fucking person who sees spirits, who connects with the dead, who has dreams and who has multiple personalities. Now people all around that have at least one of those traits and I have to figure out who they are so they can help me or I can help them or whatever but at the end of the day it's a spiritual world spiritual war going on and the people who tell us that we're crazy are the people who don't want us to know who we are as soon as I realized who I was I had a sense of freedom as crazy as everybody said I was, I was able to step into that craziness and feel completed. So, so it is what it is and it's going to be what it's be. I can be crazy or I cannot be crazy. Either way, I'm still going to be me. You feel me?